Welcome back to Hook to Hunt. Today's episode is going to be the first episode of Behind the Catch. Behind the Catch is a new series that we're starting where we talk about the tips and tactics we use to land the fish that we caught in some of our previous episodes. Also, in addition to Behind the Catch, uh, look for Behind the Hunt, which uh, we will talk about the tips and tra tactics that we use to land whatever we're hunting for, whether it was a buck or turkey or so forth. So, but this is the first Behind the Catch episode, and this episode is going to refer to uh, our most recent video, Canoeing Frigid Water for Crappies. So if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you go over to our YouTube page and uh, check that out. But let's let's jump into the details. Let's talk about the conditions first. So it's late winter. Um, we just got done with probably like a three three week to a month cold front that came through. And it started to warm up and it was getting above freezing during the day and below freezing at night. And the snow that was on top of the ice melted and then refroze. So we had fairly um, clear ice overall and the visibility in the water was really good, especially during the day hours. A lot of the times when that does happen, the visibility is really good. You gotta change up your tactics a little bit. But water clarity was really good and we probably had maybe about five, six inches of ice or so where we were at. All right, let's get into location. The location where we were fishing was a back slough, um, closed off slough type area where there was no current. Um, the deepest part of this slough was probably between eight and 10 feet deep. And there's shallow entrance to get into the slough. Um, but the biggest thing that we, we look for a lot of times are these sloughs that have probably at least um, five to six feet deep. Uh, but ideally pushing closer to 10 feet deep. And are closed off to where they have no current. In most of those locations off the Mississippi River, you will find crappie. But more importantly, the details on how we found this location. So we like to use our hunting apps that we use for deer hunting and everything else to get aerial views. Not only that, your hunting app can also show you what is public land and what is not public land if you have a decent enough app. And I'll get more into more details here in a second on what exact hunting app I use. Besides our hunting apps, all other resources you can use is the DNR website. A lot of times they have maps of different lakes and Mississippi pools and so forth. The Army Corps of Engineers uh, website also has good maps as far as showing the Mississippi pools and wing dams and other structure like that. Uh, you could use Google Earth or any other mapping system that shows an aerial view of the river or whatever you're looking for. So you can use any of those. We use our hunt apps. Um, and I also use my Helix 8 mapping system. So I do have a Smart Strike card in my Helix 8 for the Midwest area, and I also have one for Minnesota. But it, that card also has all the Mississippi River pools uh, that basically go through Iowa, um, Illinois, and, and farther down. So, so let's, uh, let's jump into it and take a look at the hunting app and what that looks like and how we do our research. All right, here you can see... My hunt stand app. I actually got it pulled up on the desktop, but you also can utilize this on your phone, which is where I normally use it from. But I do have it up on the desktop mainly for showing you guys how I utilize this to find fishing locations and sloughs. So I'm not going to show you the exact slough we were fishing, uh, but I will show you how to do research and find areas like that and show you what a slough looks like. So right now I have pulled up is part of the Mississippi south of Davenport um, area I've never fished before. If I were to want to fish this type of area, this is how I would do research and try to navigate and figure out where I want to go. So as I zoom in here, what I would look for when I'm trying to find some sloughs is I look for wider parts of the Mississippi River with timber. Usually uh, where there is timber and it's a little bit wider, you can find a lot of different back cuts in the river, a lot of different sloughs. And as you zoom in on this picture here, um, you can already see, well, on the hunt app, uh, Cooligar Slough, if I'm pronouncing that right. 
So this would be something to look into. Uh, once I would find this, I would actually go a step further and pull it up on my Helix 8 Smart Strike card. And hopefully this area would be mapped out. And I'd be able to tell what the water depths and so forth are in here. But either way, um, it's still an area you could look at. So this is your slough, right? It's uh, water, backwater off the channel. It's closed off. It doesn't open back up in the channel, so that water is not going to be flowing through. And if you have water depths around 8 feet or more, there's a good chance that you're going to have crappie holding back in here. Uh, same thing over on this right-hand side. You got little back cuts in here that if there is any deep holes or anything, crappie could be holding in those as well. The next thing to look at is access points. You're going to need a way to get onto this property. So one reason why I like this hunt stand app is I can go up to maps. I can change it to public land. And it's going to show me what area is public land and what is private. So your uh, public land is highlighted in a different color here. You got your army corps of engineers uh, area off to the right, which is also public both have open access um, so you're gonna be able to access either one of these uh, pieces of property through the timber you just said have to find a road that connects into this and you could access that now in the <clears throat> now in the canoeing video uh, where we canoe the creek area we actually had a creek that was in between the slough and a bunch of other land and that creek actually ran all the way up into a public area right next to our road so our road access point was close to the creek and we put the canoe in and canoed all the way down into where that slough was at so but that is one tool that you guys can use um in addition to that if you do find a good spot to fish or you found a spot you want to go look at uh, later on you can mark it on this app and label it whatever you want to do you can put a custom mark on it and so forth and you'll have it so uh, so yeah definitely use your hunting apps um, they help out quite a bit and as you're navigating them as well pull them up on your phone you can find exactly what you're looking for so hopefully that helps all right now let's talk about the fishing gear we used to land those crappies the other day all right, the fishing pole that I used the other day, my primary pole, is a clam gravity ultralight. So the reel is an ultralight, it's in line, and it has a very soft tip um, that you usually can tell about any bite. So you don't really need anything additional on that pole because the tip is pretty good for sensing panfish bite. And I usually use this with larger panfish uh, lures like your uh, ripping wrap, jigging wrap, your spoons, and so forth. Now, if I'm fishing with a small jig, a lot of times I'll just use some of my cheaper poles. I'm not gonna lie, they're probably bought at Walmart or somewhere like that, and they're ultralights. Um, but as you can see here on the tip of this one, this is just a cheap old bite strike that I have on here. It's just a piece of wire that's taped on there. Believe it or not, that simple system works pretty well for a really finicky panfish bite. Um, and also what you guys are all aware of is your spring. I like to use either a bite striker or a spring if I'm fishing for panfish. So I did mention the water conditions were extremely clear um, and the visibility was, was good as well. A lot of light was able to make its way through the ice since there was no more snow on it and the fish can see, see very well. In addition to that, the bite was extremely finicky um, still coming out of that cold front, especially during the day. Um, so the jig in front of me here is, is a blue, green, yellow, fiery tiger type of jig. Very, very small, real finesse. Um, and I went to this really small jig after probably about 30 minutes of not getting anything to bite and ended up starting to pull fish through the hole put them on the ice. As you can see here, the size of this jig is extremely small. So this was definitely a very finesse approach. So I caught 
tons of little stripers on this and then I caught some couple crappie on this as well uh, over a little bit longer period of time. Now as it got closer to dark the bite did pick up. That's when I transitioned to the Swedish pimple spoon. This one was in nickel. We've had luck multiple times this year with that spoon. Um, it, what you can see on there that white is a piece of glow tape. It has a little red blade on it and the back side of this is all chrome. Look at the size difference between that jig and that spoon. Definitely a different approach, um, but the spoon did work great as it got closer to dark and after dark. I hit, that's what I hit that monster crappie on and all the other crappies we caught that night. So that jig was hot. Matt was giving me some <laughs> about the size of the lure. Didn't want to try it out. If you watched the video, you saw that. And then after I pulled in a bunch of crappie, later at night, he finally switched to a spoon. And then lo and behold, he caught a crappie himself. So um, that spoon is absolutely something you're going to have in your bag. Other than that, the line that I have rigged up on all my poles is six pound Berkeley Vanish. For if you're just out pan fishing, in all reality, you can go with the three pound or a two pound, especially if the bite is really finicky. But I did use six pound Berkeley Vanish. All right, well, that concludes this episode of Behind the Catch. Hopefully, you found this information helpful. If you don't want to miss future shows, episodes, you name it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. All right, I will catch you guys later. Hook to hunt.